basics of harnessing our divine possibilities. Number one, if you want to harness your divine possibilities, kill every secret cow. I learned this from John G. Lake. The reason many, what we call secret cows, are misconceptions that we have not thoroughly studied through to understand the mind of God. They are called secret cows. You want to prosper, but there's a contention. You don't know the difference between functioning by the speed of the Holy Ghost and human ambition. And so you can't release your divine energy. When God is promoting you, you are afraid. People will think you are ambitious. And so you, you sopeda. They are called secret cows. There's a sickness trying to attack your body. You are not sure whether God is the one teaching you something. Or whether it's the devil attacking you. And so you cannot fight vehemently. Because you heard somebody said somewhere that God uses sickness to teach his people children things. Another person says sickness is the attack of the devil. So you are in between the two. You can't fight. They are called secret cows. God does not use sickness to teach you a lesson. He has too many verses of scripture to use. <laughs> if you find any area of your life where there are secret cows and you don't slaughter them you will never release your divine possibilities your hindrance will come from within you they tell you it doesn't matter if you are born again no, this place where you come from people don't succeed when i started ministry they told me brother your, the summary of your ministry will be to fight and create a way for your children because before you succeed in ministry you must at least be of the third generation I say, well, I am of the eternal generation. Because my great-grandfather is God the Father. And my grandfather is God the Son. My father is God the Holy Ghost. I began from the cross. So I have gone beyond three generations. I came from eternity past. You cannot tell me. You know why many are not succeeding? They feel, no, no, no. They have to use this lifetime to fight the battles of their ancestors. And then you see them at 80. They are still fighting the battles. Fighting the battles. If you don't slaughter secret cows, you will die. In Mark 7 verse 13, it says you have made the word of God of none effect by your tradition. That's why no matter the prophecy, no matter the impartation, you go nowhere. You have used human traditions to make the word of God of none effect. And so the first fight you fight is from within. That's why Ephesians 4.24, it says be ye transformed. It said, be ye renewed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. You renew the, 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 the spirit of your mind. After righteousness and true holiness. Allow God to transform you. All of these things we pick. We pick an adage. We pick a parable. And we pattern our life. It will frustrate you. You don't need any adage. You don't need any parable. Carry scripture is enough. Number two. How do you deploy the power of God you have to recognize everything the devil is doing as an attack on your destiny the devil can hide behind his oppressions and make it appear to you like circumstances if you allow attacks that the devil masquerade as circumstances it will bury you before you know See, God was speaking in Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a hope and a future. So anything that negates the glorious possibility of your future is not God. It's the devil. And you must fight it as an attack. Too many people are complacent, redundant, and lukewarm. Because they call arrows shot at them as events and circumstances if you don't discern the devil you are in trouble he said don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy so make sure you stand guard against the devil and there are three things you must do about the attacks of the devil number one consider all of them to be the same 
whether it is cancer or headache, is the devil. Don't make the mistake of exalting one demonic problem above the other. You will reduce the effect of the power of God. The same power that deals with headache is the same power that deals with cancer. What the devil wants to do to you is to make you feel certain dimensions of his attack require stronger power. And so you will be there undermining what you carry and exhorting what the devil is throwing at you. The power that can heal cancer is the same power that can bring somebody out of obscurity. Because it came from the devil, it is the same. It's one thing that deals with them. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about healing all. It was the same power that healed the blind. It was the same power that healed the dead. It was the same power that raised the dead. The second way to approach the attack of the devil is to consider everything as a person. If it is headache, see it as a person. Because everything the devil is doing, he is behind it. If it is poverty, see it as a person. If it is reproach, see it as a person. If it is near success syndrome, see it as a person. If you see it as a circumstance, instead of dealing with the spirit, you start looking for strategy. And if you begin with strategy, you will fail. It's when you deal with the spirit that the strategies will work. Anything you are going through, see it as a person. A demon is behind it. And so somebody tells you, my business is not doing well. You say, you devil. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Before you give business plan. Somebody tells you, I have pain in my shoulder. There's a growth on my eye. You devil. In the name of Jesus, get out. Does it not surprise you that everybody Jesus intervened in their situation? The Bible summarized it as the oppression of the devil. Because behind every negative circumstance is a spirit. When the spirit is taken away, the situation will be handled. In Luke 13 16, Jesus met a woman that was bent over. You will call it a spinal disorder. Jesus said, Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, being oppressed these 18 years, should be let loose? He narrowed it to the devil. If you don't deal with demonic circumstances as a person, you will think they are events, phenomenons, or occurrences, and it will limit your possibility. And finally, see everything from the realm of everything that negates your destiny as an attack. See it as an attack. It came to make you a prisoner of war. If you don't see it as an attack, you can relax. And lie on your bed and say, Lord, please help me. Oh Lord, when will this happen? You are joking. For those of us who understand how this thing works, they tell me, hey, this thing happened to this person. In the name of Jesus, I come with aggression. I come because I know it's an attack. I have been a victim before. My brother woke up. He said, I'm having pain on this side of my head. Ah, if you have pain, take Panadol now. He took Panadol. After a while, it became partial paralysis. After a while, they said they found typhoid. After a while, he went into coma. I don't joke with anything that negates my destiny. Tell me something happens to somebody and you will see how the lion will wake up in split second. Because I see everything that negates destiny as an attack. I don't know how to pray casually. In dealing with circumstances if somebody has headache I pray with the same intensity I will pray if I were praying for the dead somebody says business is not working I address it with the same intensity with which I will address somebody who is dying because every attack requires your strongest opposition instantly because you take it for granted the devil will cover more ground ask people who are victorious they will tell you I don't pray casually Somebody comes to you, there's a problem. You say, Oh, Father, Girondo Sabarakina, Malendo Kavi, Karaga, Savila, bro. When you finish acting, come back and fight. When I'm fellowshipping with God, I can lift my hand. Lebro Saparakido Sahatai, Vilodungra Parastavriga Hasti. But not when somebody comes with a problem. When you come with a problem, it's not fellowship. Maka Sekakoa. Bakarato, Sezana, Kapata, you devil, come out! 
and he knows that this one will not take no for an answer and because he doesn't have too much to waste he will run to another location quickly 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 that's how you deploy the power of god you come as a warrior you come as a warrior it was the same intensity david fought goliath he used to fight the bear who is this uncircumcised philistine that has risen against the army of god the bible said when goliath was walking towards david he said david charged at him with aggression you are doing business you lose one million you are saying no something went wrong before you check lock the door makaka erakabado sabata any devil that has come to open my pocket any demon that has come to attack this business mapero barakano asaza sasa i judge you when you finish when you finish call the expert and tell them let's review this business what is happening they will think you are a scholar they don't know you are first of all a priest you hijack it in the spirit then you deal with it in the natural number three if you want to harness and utilize the power of god in you stop begging start giving commands when you beg you bring yourself at the mercy of the circumstance god has not made us beggars he said he has made us kings and priests and he said where the word of the king is there is power who can say unto him what doest thou jesus said when a mountain is before you don't beg god lord come and answer mark 11 22 he said have the god kind of faith he said when there's a mountain before you speak to the mountain command the mountain be thou removed he didn't say oh lord if you are willing let this mountain be removed that's for children what do you mean oh god if you are willing if god was not willing why did he send jesus to die when you meet the mountain you mountain of devil get out you command if you don't command you will lose even in the natural don't you see how it works you find a problem that you should handle you are there using kiss glove until your enemy builds confidence and begins to attack you by the time you are trying to fight back your morale has already gone down but if the devil comes close to your door and you shout before you come out you will run you give commandments in order to deploy the grace of god on your life that is how we were designed the fourth posture you must take is the posture of purity the princes you are dealing with they understand the laws of the spirit and so many times when a principality is attacking your space he's attacking your space because he knows you have already violated spiritual laws if you don't violate the laws of the spirit he won't come because he knows that his power is tied to your violation and so a man who wants to have perpetual victory in the deployment of the grace of god must sustain purity as a lifestyle in john 5 14 after jesus healed the blind man he told him see that you continue not in sin lest a worse thing happen to you because it's our iniquity that opens the door to the devil when you find people fighting and not generating result it's not their revelation that is at fault it's their consecration that is at fault trace it to where they open the gate lock it up and see how helpless the devil will appear finally you must always keep your intensity in Leviticus 6 12 it said the fire on the altar must not be put out he said the priest must put wood on it every morning if your fire goes down you lose everything you must sustain your intensity if you want to remain a commander the bible said in romans 12 11 it said be far, be not smartful in business it said but be fervent in spirit serving the lord if your fervency is affected your authority will be affected and hope you know that remaining on fire has a lot of spiritual engagements required to stay on fire 
you must be full of prayer. To stay on fire, you must be full of the word. Fire is not shouting. Spirits don't hear human volume. They hear spiritual intensity. You can be shouting, but your intensity is low. And you can be talking very low, but your intensity is very high. Demons have a way of discerning our intensity level. And so if you want your intensity to remain strong, you must be full of prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17 It said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Romans 12.12 12, It said, rejoice in hope. Patient in tribulation. Constant in prayer. Why is it so? Because the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He maketh tremendous power available. There are many persons who forget to cook themselves and when they appear on the stage they start shouting this is not where you generate power this is where you manifest power you generate power on your altar you manifest power on your platform be it your job be it your pulpit that's where you manifest from if you have not built power in the place of prayer if you have not built intensity the devil will make a mockery of your ordination and secondly to sustain intensity you must be full of the word you must be full of the word Jesus was speaking in John 15 7 he said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you say you will ask whatever you want and it shall be given to you so the key to your answers is the abiding of the word in you and you in the word Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oropo, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.